Well, welcome to another wonderful time of her her perspective of this is my story. And uh, our focus this month on is on women in business. We will close out this session with our guests tonight, Mariska Warren and Faint Adams of Apostolic Creatives and Entrepreneurs. And they will share about their ministry podcast and branding. And so we're going to go ahead and go for the Lord in prayer. Father, we are awesome, God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for being a God that even endows us with creativity with creative ideas. We thank you that you created the earth, Father, and we know that a lot of those creativities are in us. We thank you for those that are on the line that share their creative gifts and those that want to go forth in entrepreneur. Father, we ask that you continue to provide for them, give them directions, oh, Father, and help them to be able to go forth in their purposes. We pray for those that may be sick tonight, not feeling well in their body. We thank you, Lord, for the healing that you provided. Thank you for being the bomb of Gilead. And we thank you for your blood that covers that sickness and causes it to be healed in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for forgiveness of our sins, Father, any faults, any things that's in our heart that's not like you. We ask that you forget, forgive us, God. We ask that you help us to continue to work on ourselves as you continue to make us and make us whole. We pray for those, God, that will even see the replay that you would do likewise with them. And we pray for our guests tonight as they share, Father, that you would continue to bless them in all of their endeavors. And we give you praise and glory for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. This time we'll read our scripture. Our scripture is coming from Proverbs 16 and 3. King James Version says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Proverbs 16 and 3 of the King James Version. This time we have a musical selection by Selah. Firm foundation. Firm foundation. We know that we are all built on that firm foundation, and that is Jesus Christ. Firm foundation by Selah.
Shopify right. point of sale makes it easy to start and grow. Question. Oh, yes, you are. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for that wonderful song by Sila. And of course, you all can listen to that on YouTube. The uh, group is called Sila. The group is called Sila. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and introduce our wonderful guest. We ask that everyone, please mute your audio. Please mute your audio. And I'll go in and try to mute those that can't. All right. All right. We did that. So we're going to go ahead and introduce our wonderful guest tonight. Uh, our guest is uh, mm -hmm. Sister Mariska Warren, as well as Sister Faint Adams that will be joining us a little bit later on. And they're of apostolic creatives and entrepreneurs. And I'm just going to read what she sent me today to kind of introduce what apostolic uh, creatives are. It's called the acronyms is ACE, A-C-E, ACE. ACE is for apostolic creatives and entrepreneurs and those who are aspiring to be in a community for education, resources, growth, networking, and relationship building. And their vision uh, is to cultivate a thriving community where apostolic individuals unite their creative gifts and entrepreneurs' endeavors to advance the kingdom of God. And their mission is uh, to foster a community of passionate individuals dedicated to sustainable creativity and entrepreneur endeavors rooted in the biblical principles of Goshen. And I just thought this was really interested. And when I saw them on Facebook, I said, oh, that would be wonderful to have them come on and share about their ministry. And I saw it was, and I oftentimes go back and look at the podcast that they have great information. They have great guests on there as well. But I thought that would be very fitting, especially for a time that we have her perspective, that they can come on and talk about uh, their, especially their, you know, their specific purposes. Uh, just individually, as well as their gifts with the entrepreneurship as well. And so we're going to give away for Sister Mariska, a, a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful sister, amen, that hails from Greater Christ Temple Church. <laughs> and we know that she is everywhere. I call her, she is an international woman of God because she travels. You'll see her at all the events. She is really known, especially in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. I think she's with the media team and the IPYPU. I think she's, are you the secretary of the IPYPU? And she'll, she'll give a little bit more about herself when she comes in and shares. So we're going to give away for Sister Mariska to, uh, to share. Just She'll tell us a little bit about herself, and then she will uh, bring us into the uh, area of this ministry that her and Sister Faint have. So please sit attentively as she shares. Yes. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes. Oh, yes we can it's hear. It's good to see family. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see y'all. Um, look what social, not social media, but technology can do. It can connect us all around the world. So uh, it, it's just really good to see my Nashville family in the house. I see my mom is here. Uh, I see a little bit of everyone, but thank you. I want to first start um, and say thank you, Evangelist Morrison, for the invitation. But thinking about little old us, <laughs> we appreciate the invitation to be here and to be and share on your platform who aces. Um, but I will start a little bit about myself. If I'm like it's freezing a little bit. You're frozen a little bit. We'll go to Nashville and we also will go Thank to you. church at Greater Christ Temple. So I want to say that was around, I was 10 or 11 years old. So so most of the ladies on the line literally watch me grow up. <laughs> so it's good. Many opportunities. Uh, I see that Dr. Crook is on, that, you know, just the the family 
that has given me the pathway to be where I am today. So I am forever, forever grateful. Um, and I see, I call her my spiritual mother, uh, Sister Beverly, she's on too. So thank you for joining. But um, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, I went to um, Hampton University, Tennessee State University for grad program. And now I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I got a job right after school. Um, that took me to Charlotte. I didn't know anyone. I had no family or friends here. Um, but I said, you know, with my personality, I will meet everyone I need to meet when I get there. Uh, so God has planted me in a, in a really phenomenal church here, um, Calvary Christian Church. And here we are. Here we are. So um, I see that Oh, am I frozen? You were you were from the very beginning. <laughs> oh no. Okay, can you all hear me now? Bit. Yeah, we can hear you. But if just just a, a, a just a tad of it, I think she may want you to share. I don't know. Look, my mama, she knows who I am. She birthed me. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. I see, I see my partner in crime has joined, Sister Faint Adams. Amen. Uh, she had joined us. Um, she she hails in the state from the state of Tampa, Florida. But I will get us started on just who Ace is. Um, like you already said in the introduction, Evangelist Morrison, that Ace it stands for the Apostolic Creatives and Entrepreneurs. And this just came about earlier this year, um, and it started with the vision of really getting to know or just want to highlight the people in the apostolic community um, because in this world you know what is displayed on social media in the news are people who are you know secular individuals that are doing really great but however there are so many great individuals in the church who are doing just as you know great things too and so this is the community that Fane and I faint vision actually um started and i tagged along with her to really birth um this brand so tonight it's all about branding and so we will talk about you know the the grassroots effort of ace and then she will kick you know continue on with her perspective and also she has many businesses but one thriving business that she has that she may talk about later on so let me get my notes together okay here we go because I, I have to write down some things. Um, but yeah, so ACE, once again, is just a community of believers. We are high, or also who are aspiring to be in the community or to be apostolic as well. We are highlighting those, whether that is business, giving resources for inspiration. Uh, we do a little bit of everything, but the core of it is to, to showcase people who have businesses out there. Um, and then also... Part of this, we have we have a podcast as well called the Ace Podcast, which is on YouTube. You can find us on YouTube if you want to join the community. It is Join Ace Today on Instagram. Also, we have the Apostolic Creators and Entrepreneurs on Facebook. So, you know, if you all would like to join on Facebook for those, we have started a fitness chat where we encourage each other um, for healthy living. Um, not only that, you know, we go to church and shout, but outside of church, we also are living a healthy life and taking care of the life that God has given us. So with that being said, we have a podcast where we interview, currently we have interviewed, um, a, a, you know, a bunch or various of people um, in business. One, we interview someone who is a wedding planner. And one of the taglines that she had was the I think one of her budget or not budget, but she did an 80,000 wedding. So pretty much 80,000 and above are the typical clients that she works with. So yeah, she's an apostolic woman. And then also we interviewed a, a young individual, a young man who has a fleet of Turo cars. And also he has yachts, um, Airbnbs, and he's just really, God has really blessed him. So those two interviews are already out on YouTube, as well as one of the interviews we did with a young lady who is, uh, she's a celebrity stylist. So she's styled, she's created dresses for Ja'Kalen Carr that many of us know, um, Tasha Page Lockhart, you know? So um, she also apostolic and she started, um, she said Jesus in YouTube. 
is her inspiration and what has taught her and helped her to get to where she is to this day. And also one of the interviews that we've interviewed is a young man. He is seven years old and he is named the fastest kid in the nation. Mm. He is Holy Ghost field baptized in Jesus name <laughs> and running for his life. <laughs> But <laughs> he he is doing well. And he also is one of the youngest kids to, or probably the youngest, who has an NIL deal. So that's the name, image, and likeness. So, you know, majority of the, not apostolic, but athletes out there who are young, not just the NFL players or those who are professional athletes, they now can get deals they can have sponsorships at their age and so at the age of seven he has a deal with I think for garage where they are naming a burger after him <laughs> so it is really cool so that interview is coming out soon um that will be on our YouTube Apple Music and Spotify play you know Spotify Spotify stores um so with with all of that many people will say, I did not know that. I did not know that's possible. So we want to be able to inspire individuals. If you have that dream, if you have that vision, if you have something that God has given you, do it. You know, um, so many people who are not biblical or believe in the Bible, they take those principles and thrive off of it. So why cannot we who are, you know, children of God, who has the promises of God to, you know, thrive and do the same thing as well. So this community that we have cultivated and created is just that for inspiration, to tell the stories of the believers. Um, so I hope and I pray that tonight that you all will be inspired, um, will take something, some nuggets from what we say, um, and, you know, and thrive and be great. I think this month, Evangelist Morrison, you said this is a women in business month. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know the st statistics, but I do know that women, especially black women, kind of rule the dollar. Mm -hmm. That's why many corporations come and advertise to us because they know that the money lies in the black community or lies in women. Women in business, I think, or I want to say women are the fastest growing and creating a business or starting a small business. I want to say um, I work in the bank area too. So I kind I don't know the statistics there, but I do know um, or familiar with that. So it's power. It's power in our dollar. It's power in our vision. It's, it's power in what we have. Um, so with that being said tonight, we are talking about branding. I don't want to take too much of it. I don't want to preach, <laughs> uh, but I do want to uh, talk a little bit about branding from my perspective. Um, when I came into this, I came, you know, into the, the ACE community. I only had one sided because also in the name is creatives. I wasn't on the entrepreneur side. I'm more so on the creative side of things. So I came in as a consumer of how I know and why I buy brands like Chick-fil-A. Why do we go to Chick-fil-A? Because of the customer service. That's a brand within itself because we have the expectation of when we go, we're going to get A1 treatment. So we may not go to McDonald's anymore. You know, we, we've we gained a little bit more money <laughs> and we like to be treated a certain type of way. And so all of that is branding. When you look at why you buy what you buy, it's because the name behind it. And so that's the same when we have our own brand. When you think, why do I have this product? Why do I have this service? How do I want people to feel? It's not so much of how you want to feel, but you have to look at it. I'm learning from a consumer perspective. So now I guess i am got my business hat on and I have to see, well, what is the need of others and how can I meet that need? And so that encompass, even when it comes to um, your logo, your typography, your words, um, even what you wear, like today I'm wearing the t-shirts, I'm wearing the brand. So if you want to go to joinacetoday.com to purchase t-shirts and a hat, you can do so. But that's branded within itself. So every day, even how you present yourself is a brand. If you are not happy about your product, 
what makes people want to buy your product <laughs> if you're not happy about it? If you don't have that, you know, that passion behind why you sell what you sell. That's what gets to sell because it's a story. So what is your personal story or your business story that will want someone to buy your, to buy your product, to book your service? You have to ask yourself that. And that is how you build or start to build and lay the foundation for your brand. And those are some of the things that I had to learn now coming from a business perspective. I also work with the International Pentecostal Young People's Union. So that's the youth arm of PAW, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. Um, I work as the marketing director and I got this role not really knowing much because I'm an accountant auditor by trade. Um, I took a couple business classes in school. So I know a little bit. Um, but now I'm really think she's helping me a lot to really look at it from a marketing perspective, a branding perspective. So even with the young people, we are revamping how we look. Even if that comes to colors, it's a certain color scheme that we've created called the official color palette. We are only using those colors. So if you go to our Instagram pages, it won't look like a bunch of flyers that's just everywhere but it's about the story that we want to tell. How can we tell that story? And how can our brand be consistent to either, if you look at our video, if you look at our page, you know who we are. So that's what we want to, for people to be able to familiarize them, themselves with us. So I'm, I'm learning that aspect as well. It, it, it's a lot that go into it um, than just having a social media page, um, or, you know, a nice graphic, that's cool. But what is the story behind it that you want to tell? And how will you, how will people resonate with that story? So I know I've talked fast, <laughs> but it, are there any questions so far? Any comments? We'll wait until, uh, uh, till Sister Faint shares and then we'll come back for, for dialogue. All right. Okay. Awesome. If you want to awesome. Pray. Okay, so that I just wanted to kick us off uh -huh. with who we are, with my perspective, um, and a little introduction to branding. And I will hand it over to my partner in crime, Faint Adams, Sister Faint Adams, and she will talk more about branding. And I think we have how long do we have? Is uh, she can share uh, maybe another ten minutes. You know. Okay in her part, and then we're going to come back for dialogue. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, are on mute. You probably have to right. unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Uh-huh, there you go. It's wonderful. Hey, everyone. Oh, nice to meet you all. A lot of smiling faces, beautiful people who I've never seen before, but we're a body of Christ, so it's we all family. Um, My name is Faint. That's my real name, like you pass out. <laughs> Um, and my last name is Adams. I'm here in Tampa, Florida. Originally, I'm from Georgia. Um, I'm part of the United Pentecostal Church International. Um, and I go to New Life Tabernacle in Tampa, Florida, up under the leadership of Bishop Daniel Davey. Um, and I, more so I deal with, um, you know, I have a business called Chosen Vessels, which is Christian apparel. But we also, uh, you know, I was able to launch, which is now known as Apostolic Creatives and Entrepreneurs that we just call simply ace. Um, Mariska has definitely been a blessing in the vision that the Lord had gave me uh, to want to start the community. And I try to let people know immediately that this isn't a faint thing. We never desired to really be the face of it. It's certainly more so of a God thing. And, um, you know, for the community of believers and those that are even inspiring to be entrepreneurs and create creatives to come in and get knowledge and gain wisdom um, in regards to it. Um, I'll talk a little bit more on the branding piece. And um, I did want to just mention a little bit also about marketing, because sometimes we get the branding and the marketing mixed up. Right. Both of them are both very essential, but um, there are two, two different things. Um, I don't know if you guys are considering a business or where you are within whatever it is that you're doing. But a lot of times I ask this question when I'm, I'm working with entrepreneurs and those that are desiring to get into the creative space which one comes first? Is it the branding or the marketing? And sometimes we get the marketing. 
sometimes we get the branding and I'll say, you know, it's a discussion that you want to sit down and clarify um, 100% because it should be your branding. Um, most people get the branding and the marketing confused and you should really think of your car as your brand and the marketing as your gas. The marketing is only taking the product and the brand where it needs to go. And if you can't get there effectively and efficiently, you don't want to be broke down and we have to call the tow truck. It's going to be like null and void. It's going to be like, what was the point of even trying that, right? So, um, and, and sometimes branding, it takes time. It takes a lot of consideration in your thoughts. And there's nothing wrong, like Mariska was saying, when you think of Chick-fil-A, you know, you think of a certain thing. You got, you think of Gucci, Louis Vuitton, some of the top brands. Sometimes you're not even willing to go inside of the store because you already know maybe your it's not in your budget in this season. But there's a particular brand that it gives off or a particular feeling that it gives off. And when you go in there and they, oh, how are you doing, Miss Adams? Would you like some water? You're not just giving me Aquafina. You're giving me some water that I can't even pronounce. I've never seen this water before. So it's the entire experience of what you feel. And Brandon goes with everything, even from the way that we deal in church. When we, get, when we invite someone and they come into our congregation, what is it that they feel? When they see you for the first time and how you carry yourself, even on your corporate job, you are your brand. We are brand ambassadors for Christ. What is it that people see when they see us? Can they see him? So a lot of times you may not even realize that you're branding yourself and you are a brand in your everyday, day-to-day -day life. And when we kind of take a step back and look at that, you know, what do people think about me? What do I think about me is very important. And most importantly, what does God think about me? Who does he say I am? And once you get into who he says you are, then that's the vision of the brand of who you can become. So that's the beautiful thing when we, uh, you know, we think about branding. And so again, marketing is going to get the attention of the customer, but your brand is what's going to keep the attention of the customer. When someone marketed it to you and said, oh, you can live for God, you can do this, you can do that. And you come into the church your branding is your staying power. What's going to keep them there? What did they get engaged in? Maybe they came in because of you. You influenced them. But what is it? What ministry is it that they got a hold of? What is it that that you like about Nissan that you only want to purchase a Nissan? You know, what is it that you like about this particular bookstore that you only want to go here? You're going for the books, but maybe you enjoy the fact that you also can get coffee. Um, when I pass by gas stations, right? And I don't even drive a gas car anymore. But, you know, when we think about Wawa, I don't know if you guys have a Wawa. They have free air at their gas station. So even if you just went to get air for free and you look, man, I might as well go ahead and get gas now that I'm here. And this little things that you think about that give you that experience that allow you to want to stay um, and with logos, they're very important. I tell people all the time, your logo is very important. It's a way that we identify. And a lot of times what I notice that what we like to do, um, just people in general, when we create a logo, we want to put everything about that logo that we do in that logo. Don't do that. Your brand should be so strong that your logo represents your brand. Um, your brand represents your logo, not your logo necessarily represents your brand. When you think about Target, it's very simple. You think about BMW or Mercedes, those branding logos, they don't have a car in them. But when we see those logos, we know that that's top of the line. You know, Burger King kind of has a burger in it, but Pepsi doesn't. And when you're considering a brand, always consider the logo portion. Colors are very important. You want a color scheme. Think about, you know, if you pick a goal, how is that goal going to look if you had to get a gold shirt? That gold shirt is not the same on what a gold may look if it's digitally printed. Mm. So always consider if you're getting a logo or anything like that, hey, can you send this to me in black and white? Because it has to look good in black and white too. Because I may go to somewhere where it's going to be huge, where I may be on a step and repeat banner, and maybe they're only printing the logos in black and white, but I still want to stand out and I want it to look well. So anytime you're considering any type of printing or anything that's digitally Get it in your colors, but also tell them, let me see it in black and white as well, because we don't want to have to always change colors, but sometimes we do change, right? So that's very important to see what it looks like in that. Um, a lot of times it was very trendy to go with a bunch of colors and a bunch of glitter. I don't recommend that because those things don't print well. When you send it to someone else to get things printed 
Um, it may not come out in the glitter that you see what it looks like digitally and different screens display things differently, different um, printers print things differently. Um, and there's something that you guys can write down. I don't know if you know this, but it's called the hex code, H-E-X. And all that is, is just numbers and letters that give us the direct color of what that color is that you guys have picked. It's even for black, for white, for green, for blue, whatever it is, so that when you send your logo over or whatever it is that you're getting printed, you can give them the hex code to ensure that it looks the exact same color that it's supposed to be. If you've seen a picture of Pepsi, a Pepsi logo, and you've seen it in purple, you're gonna be like, oh, that ain't really right, something's wrong. And we should feel the same way about our brands because right now it's small, but if you're faithful over the little things, it'll make you ruler over much. So a lot of times we have to cast the vision and identify where we want to be because it's not if you go viral, it's not if you do well, it's when you do well, are you prepared and already have the steps in place in order to be able to move forward with it? Because we know that there's a principle. If you work hard, you're going to produce something in the end. That's why you have people that are not saints that are very successful because they're adamant and they just are willing to work hard and God is going to bless it because you're working hard, um, you know, in, in regards to that. So that's some things that I would say. And then also, no matter what your business is, uh, whether it's product or service based, make sure you invest in high quality images. Um, high quality images 10 years ago or eight years ago took my business from at that time only doing about $100, $150 a month. We took some high quality pictures. We made like two grand the, the, the same month that we put those pictures out because people want to see what does this product look like for me? You know, I know that, for example, you know, like Mariska was saying, you know, we're on a health journey. A lot of us are wanting to get in shape, things of that nature. It just spun out. We started this thing. And as we're starting this thing, God is like adding to it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just got to start. I'm a firm believer that if you start taking two steps, the Lord will say, well, you know what? You took this step. Maybe you don't know about branding, but since you walk and I'm going to have this person pick up on this block. And because you're walking, I'm going to have that person pick up on that block. And so um, in the midst of doing it, we've started a fitness group. When I'm on Instagram looking at people who work out, right? And you call yourself a personal trainer. Okay, sis and bro, you look good. You got a six pack, but you've probably been working out for 20 years. Let me see the big girls. What, who have you transformed? What have you done for other people? You know, so so I can see myself in that because that's all still a part of the brand. And sometimes we focus so much on ourselves when, when nobody really came to see you. We want to know about the product and how the product is going to help us. And that's why you have so many people that can have faceless brands. When you think about Nike, most people don't know the CEO of Nike. Most people don't know the CEO behind Enterprise, rental cars or Airbnb, but we know that there is a brand, there is a level of expertise and excellent that is associated with what we feel when we deal with these particular companies. You know, it's a difference between Starbucks and a difference between McDonald's coffee. Now, my dad, he wants his McDonald's coffee because he know he can get it for like 55 cents. But my mama, she ain't finna stop by Dunkin' Donuts or either Starbucks. She ain't finna McDonald's on the death. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... What is, and both of those are well-established brands, different price point, but it all is branded to the person that's behind it. My dad is excited that he's a senior. He's excited he can get this discounted coffee. My mother's a nurse. She's excited that she can stop by on her work, on her way to work. As soon as she pull up, the people at Dunkin' Donuts already know her order the way she wants it, how she wants it. And she's just ready to go. So a lot of times I'll say, don't limit yourself when you're considering your branding and do a lot of research in regards to it. And with branding, people operate based off consistency. Just because you post something today, post it again tomorrow. Because the way that Facebook and Instagram plays, if you notice, if you guys are on Facebook and Instagram or any social media um, platforms, Facebook started for college students to be in touch with each other. If you were not in college, you couldn't even originally get on Facebook. Right. Now right. it's a way that people communicate. If they can't hit you on your cell phone to get you, they're going to come to Facebook. And then if they see you on Facebook, they're going to say, girl, now I see you on Facebook, but you can answer my text message. So it is a way that is so powerful. Even when the scripture talks about the, the whole world knowing the gospel, 
Facebook is a tool for that as well. So even when you have these things and they, they have a pay for play. And what that means is that you'll notice this. And now that I'm going to put your eyes on it, anytime there's an election, anything that you post on Facebook is not going to be seen as much. It's a sandbox. Whoever has the most money is going to win. Mm -hmm. And in that sandbox, in regards to that, if you have the big time politicians or someone else that's coming in wanting the space to be seen, whatever you're posting really ain't going to be seen among all of your followers and your friends. If I can give you any advice, if you have a product-based business or a service-based business, whatever you do, collect the names, the numbers, and the emails, because that is something that you'll have for forever. You can take it. You have a direct channel where you can email your clients directly. I don't care if it's five of them. It's five more than what you originally had. Because with Facebook and Instagram and all these other platforms, those are not your friends. You're leasing them. And when you're leasing something, you can't just paint the walls. You can't just go out there and put a new roof on there. When you own it, you can do whatever you want to with it. You can communicate with it as much as you like to. So please know that when if Facebook go down today, all that data, all those pictures that you put on Facebook, all those memories that you kept, they're not yours. That's why you can go look on something at Amazon, right? Where you're, you got an Amazon account linked to your email. Your email and your number are important. As soon as you get off Amazon and you go to Facebook, what's popping up? Everything that you just looked on on Amazon. And a week later, everything that you just saw, and they're going to retarget you. And then after that, you see someone that, a product that you didn't even know that you needed, they're showing up based off that because on the back end of things, you can go and tell Facebook, go find me people that look just like Sister Linda, or go find me people that look just like Mariska that are searching for, you can get so specific down to African-American, certain age groups or anything so we have to train ourselves to stop thinking like the consumer and start thinking like the business owner and sit down and take some notes and say, why list your top three brands or stores that you like shopping in? Why do I like Publix more than Walmart? Because I can get in and out. They're friendly. It ain't that many people in there, but it's a little bit more expensive, but they're going to produce every time. So that's my soapbox. I hope I didn't over talk it. I hope I kind of shed a little bit of light to branding for you guys. Oh, you have done wonderful. Oh, my God. You're talking about the information that these women are sharing tonight is power, power pack. I will ask those that are busy in their, those that are busy moving about, can you please mute your video? Please mute your video. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Still stay in the room. Just mute your video. We appreciate that. But yeah, they are really, they are really sharing some awesome information about branding. I think uh, Mariska did hit on marketing uh, as well. And I think she was dealing with like the logo. Now that's the branding, right? The logos and all that. So mm -hmm. can y'all talk just a little bit about the marketing and how important the marketing is? And I think that's, that could be one of the main problems that uh, entrepreneurs have is marketing. I know marketing can be marketing can be expensive, but it is necessary uh, when you have a business. So either one of y'all can, or both of y'all can share about marketing. The marketing is definitely an important piece, and I'll let you clean up out the mirrors if I miss anything. Okay. Um, because like I said, your brand is the car. The marketing is the gas. Once you have an established, I'd rather have a... Um, you don't want to have a product issue because to market something to everyone and then to get bad information like that product she got was terrible. It broke my skin out and everybody found out it is terrible. That's that's bad for business, right? Because it's hard to go clean that thing up. But when you think about the marketing as being the gas, it's just the tool that's going to take the product to the people. And you've got to find out where your people are. There's three levels of, of traffic, right? You have cold traffic, you have warm traffic, and you have hot traffic. Cold traffic is if like, and I'll give you an example. If you go into the mall and you pass a store and you've never been in that store before and you look and you say, oh, what is ABC clothing, right? And this is your first time seeing ABC clothing. You look at it and you say, oh, 
you know, whether you go in or you walk by, that's cold because you were a cold customer. This is your first time seeing it. Once you go into there, whether you click on it on Facebook and you see an ad or whether you go into this store for the first time, you whether you buy something or not, you become warm. It's like I'm warming you up, kind of like cooking. The food cold at first, you, you know, you turn on the stove, you're getting it ready. When you go in there and you're looking around and you're touching things, boom, 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 you become warm. Right. Even if you buy one thing, you could kind of still be warm. But once you buy something that has a lot of value, long term value, you become hot. And when you're hot, I know that I don't it doesn't take much to to get you. I can just show a picture. And because you know that everything is so uh, well with this business and this brand, you don't have to ask any questions because, you know, we're top tier. We're going to deliver every time. Mm -hmm. But what do I got to do to get the cold to get in front of cold people? Right. Do I need to be a vendor at the church? Do I need to go to other establishments? Do I need to connect with other entrepreneurs? What do I need to put my, my, my market in? You won't, I don't even go to like secular concerts and stuff, but for me to take my Christian clothing to a Beyonce concert would be counterproductive. That's not who I'm talking. We want them saved, but they're going to look at me like, oh, God, what is this? It's, it's, it's counterproductive. So yeah. when you market, you got to find out who it is that your client is. You got to find out your niche. Is it church people? Is it beyond church people? Is it older people? Is it younger people? Sure, you'll get some across different, you know, um, age and demographics. But who are my main customers? What are my three pools and what it is that I need to be doing? Email marketing is important. Social media marketing is important. Um, having good pictures and videos are also very important. And also working with influencers. Um, you know, like me, we uh, one of my businesses, I do Christian t-shirts. So I reach out to those that are in the Christian community that I see that are doing great things. And it's not about them having a bunch of followers, 300 million followers. It's more so about your influence because everybody's an influencer in their own right. You have influence on somebody, whether it's one person or 10 people, and you don't know who the next person is that you've influenced could win. I witnessed to one girl on my job and she came in, she was running for the Lord on fire, right? I didn't know that it was eight souls that was connected to her. And even though she left, her grandmother was the last one to get baptized in Jesus name, was the hardest one ever to get. But she's been there for eight years now. She goes to outreach. She serves with taking care packages for new people that come in. And that's influence that was based off one person. And all that was was marketing, marketing Jesus um, and, and letting people know. So get your email list, work on your social media. Don't be scared to, to get in there. Even if you hire people to do this, eventually you want to at least know enough information on how things function because people are fickle. They change. Somebody can step in at any time and say, I don't want to do this no more. At least have enough knowledge that you've learned so that you'll at least know how to step in and maintain it. And once you do those things, then at that point, you can start getting into some paid marketing where you're spending money to put it in front of other people, if, if that makes sense. And Mariska, you can kind of, you know, pick up from there. <laughs> yeah, no, 100 percent. You you wrapped it up, um, I guess, from the more of the educational side of it. Um, I learned this in, in school, the four P's of marketing. I don't know if many people know that, but it's very simple. You have your product, your price, place, and promotion. So product is a product or service you have. The price, what are people willing to buy? And like how much or at what cost? And then also you have your place, whether, whether that is brick and mortar, internet, you know, social media, maybe going to events and setting up being a vendor, you have to know your place to put your products and then also your promotion that goes with advertising. So those are just the, the simple, the four simple marketing um, factors, I will say. Um, but go to go with what Faint said about being influencers, sometimes it takes just sending people your product who know that will rep it. I've been a customer of Faint's business since undergrad. I want to say 2015. Like I have her old shirts. <laughs> and before I even known her personally, I was already supporting the business. I have so many hats and t-shirts before we even met face to face. Um, but it was because 
I was a, a customer of the business. You know, I believed in the vision, not even knowing, I honestly, I didn't know a black woman was behind it. <laughs> so, I, you know, she wasn't really the face of it, but it was her brand, what she put out in the world, what sold me. So those are some things to consider, but thank you, you touched on all of them. And like um, Sister Catherine, um, you said, you know, um, it marketing is expensive, but you know, are you, you know, I remember uh, probably about uh, maybe three years ago, uh, we were just investing at that point, maybe about, uh, I want to say it was maybe $10 a day on Facebook. And I, I was like, oh no, we can't do that. That's too much. But everything was so, um, we had everything else. We went back to the basics. The pictures and everything were so polished that those $10 a day generated $300 a day. Hmm. And most importantly, um, the game has changed a little bit since then, but most importantly, it got me a lot of clients and a lot of emails and things. You know how you go on a website and it's a spin now, you can get 50% off or 20% off. And even if you're not going to buy, they got those emails and those emails is what's going to allow us to remarket and, uh, and retarget as well. So, um, and then we scaled up to the time we were doing $30 a day. And then we worked it all the way to the point where we were doing $100 a day. And so when you begin to scale, marketing does cost. You know, when you think about the Super Bowl, that's one of the most well-watched yes. uh, broadcasts for forever. You know, it's been that way. Mm -hmm. And people pay millions and billions of dollars for a 30 second slot because they know all eyeballs are on this thing. And consider this, when you think about the Super Bowl, you think about what? Football, right? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all may watch football, some of y'all may not. Now I was more so of a basketball fan than a yeah, football man, but with Deion Sanders being in Colorado, I will tell you all eyes is on football. I even got me a ticket to go to Colorado on November the 11th to watch him. And I ain't never even been to Colorado before mm -hmm. because of the marketing behind this man, because of the culture that he's changed. You're, it's not just about football. You're building black men and men in general. And you're not ashamed to say that you love Christ in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if he's living worth the hill of beans, but at least he's not ashamed to say that I love Jesus and I'm humble and everything I have is because of him. Right. Even when they lost, he said, it doesn't matter because the ultimate winner is Jesus and he's already won. The fight is fixed. So you're pulling everyone from every different generation and time that is. And here I am with this Colorado buff stuff that I done ordered, not because I'm a fan, I'm a bandwagoner, simply because the marketing behind this man that we call, you know, Deion Sanders. So you've got to, you know, realize that Girl Scout cookies, <laughs> as soon as they hit, we own them. Like, mm -hmm. these are things that if we just take back and we pull back, we'll realize that they've marketed so well, they've built the brand so well, and they're willing to spend the dollars. When you go, when football season, when um, Super Bowl season comes, you go inside of the store, you see they done turned the Pepsi cases into little football fields and stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing that they do from a marketing standpoint? They go get all the TVs mm -hmm. and bring them to the front and put them on sale. They discount them sometime even more than they do on Black Friday because nobody, nobody's ego wants to be caught watching the Super Bowl on a little bit of TV. Right. A 55 inch. It used to be, if you had a 55 inch, you was falling. I know, I know. <laughs> so exceedingly, abundantly, above all, right? You get a 55 inch in the Super Bowl now. It's kind of like, where'd you get this iPad from? Right. <laughs> now you they got the 80 inches, the 90. First of all, you ain't even got 90 inches of wall in your house. You drive a Nissan Sentra. And these people don't convince you to walk out. You don't even got nowhere to put it. Yeah, she calling up my car. That's all right, sister. Go. <laughs> Right, because it's, oh, that's the gas saver. Listen, it I'm, is. I'm, it I'm, is I'm, right? good on. It's good on the road. <laughs> exactly, it one hundred percent. I agree. I, I was with it. I rode Nissan all the way till I switched to Tesla when I couldn't afford gas no more. Girl, I know. But the, but the great thing about it is that you don't even think of a TV being associated with a football. But the fact that these people have realized that the two are connected. And we people just want to buy something. We're going to put this right up front with the sodas. And once we tap into that, yes, we'll do great because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for us. Mm -hmm. 
if we can put their principle, I tell people all the time, and I'm gonna get off my soapbox. As apostolics, we have to believe God for more than just the Holy Ghost. That's just the beginning. Yes. I mean, you get baptized, you get filled, and we don't trust them for nothing else. You get diabetes, you get a headache. I work with someone at my job, and this particular person, um, to be honest with you, I thought it was a guy at first, and it, it's 100% a woman. But I'm so loving to her that she explained and told me her testimony. She said, Faint, she said, um, you know, she looked at me and you would think it was a guy. She said, um, I got an earache. I, I, something's going on. I said, well, come on. I laid my hands right there on the ear. In Jesus' name, be healed, right? And they said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go to the doctor and get this taken care of. I don't care if they're going to the doctor, but this same person said, amen, after that, right? And that is a brand ambassador for Christ, but it's also marketing where you said, amen, that you it. believe that what, whatever you believe, you believe what I believe more. Otherwise, you would have said, no, nah, I'm good. Uh -huh. But I'm on my soap, but I'm not preaching today. That's, <laughs> that's right. Good. That is really good. That's good. So really, uh, um, all this in reference that I really like the four P's of marketing and everything that you all said especially when it deals with the uh, the the branding being the car and the marketing being the gas, they work hand in hand. So right. this has really been awesome, really been awesome. I do want to open the floor for dialogue because we know we do have some entrepreneurs on the line. And so just want to open the floor for dialogue. Anybody? Any questions, any comments? Good to see Mother Ivy. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I just say great from both of the young ladies. God bless you and continue the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. We need it. We need, listen, we need mothers. <laughs> y'all Y'all don't understand. When I looked over here and I said, I said, we got some mothers. Because one of the mothers that helped me in the gospel when I came in, um, she recently passed away. And I tell people all the time, I don't know why I feel led to say this. I said, any young woman in the gospel, you need a mother because a pastor can't teach a woman how to be a woman of God. It take a mother to do that. Mm. So y'all mm. is encouraging, you know, it's encouraging to me because I lost one of the mothers that was close to me. I called the grandma this year. So seeing y'all, it's a blessing. Y'all mm. blessing us. <laughs> well, thank you. We all in this together. Amen. Sister Nakita. We can't hear you. You're muted. Okay, can y'all hear me now? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, uh, praise the Lord, y'all. Um, Sister Faint and Mariska, y'all did a wonderful job. Um, mm -hmm. So, question. Um, as a hairstylist, what would you recommend? I've run into several problems with... Um, not necessarily my branding, but it's the people that I would work with. They didn't have the same vision that I had. Needless to say, I was looking for someone that was uh, baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, forgive me if that sounds like I'm being prejudiced, but that's what I wanted. I wanted to work with someone that was saved, and I couldn't find it. So I'm glad that I have that y'all are on here so I know I can reach out to y'all. But as far as being a hair a hairstylist, what would what would you recommend as far as branding and marketing and getting it out there? Do you already have um some clients already? Oh yes ma'am. Okay. And are you active like on your social media with posting and things like that? Uh, yes and no. So I would definitely recommend the consistency of being active. And then I would go back and ask questions like, you know, I, so, I know some people when it, when it comes down to hair, listen, we don't, we don't want to change our stylist. And if we do, it has to be for a very good reason. So, um, you know, same thing, like, for example, with my nails, I went to celebrate my mom who on uh, my biological mother's birthday in Fayetteville and I let them people do my nails and they messed them up so bad. I told my nail tech, I'd never cheat on her again. Listen, it's so, <laughs> listen, they ate me up. I'm talking about, they was, when I got that, she said, me and my nail tech, she's Vietnamese. 
Um, and uh, and she's like, she let me play gospel music. I done got so far in that she let me play gospel music in the shop and everything. And she got special lotion. I told her, what you doing with this thin lotion? Girl, get some cocoa butter. This ain't gonna do nothing for us black folks. And so now she, you know, she got my own special lotion back there and everything. And so, you know, with what you're doing, because nails and hair and skin are so important to us, it's a part of who we are. And it really, it ain't pampering, you know, it's, it, that's, that's um really more so, um, uh, what is the word they use when they say, uh, uh, that's more so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of people think it's pampering. Getting your hair done ain't necessarily all that comfortable. Oh, it's self-care? More, yeah, that's self-care. That yeah, I was going to say self-care. Listen, that's a part of the day-to-day. -day. We got to make sure we keep it done. So the people that you do have being consistent with taking pictures and photos of them, and being able to use that and repurpose that. TikTok is always popping. People always yeah. want to know that. Um, and then also understanding what is it that you do? Because a lot of people nowadays, you know, even when I'm in the market and looking for a new hairdresser um, because of my hairdresser having children and her hours are not available um, as frequently as what it used to be. What is it that you're going, what is it that is your selling point? Is it that you're quick? Is it that you, because you can't be quick, fast, and expensive. You got to pick one. You know, mm -hmm. is it that you pick two? You can't get all three. Is it that you're quick with it, but you're also expensive? Is it that you're you're not expensive, but you, you know, you're getting a lot more heads? Are you going to be charging a, a big price where you, you only, you're, you know, you're only taking in so many? Are we, are we attracted to it? Because I feel like not everybody got the opportunity to get in with you. A lot of hairdressers, this is absurd to me. If I was a hairdresser, I would be washing hair. That is the most precious part of the experience. And a lot of people now want you to come with your hair washed. Then what am I coming for? I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say to add on to it, not to cut you off, Faye, is create, show people the experience they get with you. Because a lot of people now, they want that experience. And for them to see what you do and how you treat people, how you take care of the tresses, how you maybe do the sting treatment and the bowl and all that stuff. So if that's creating reels or creating videos to show people, this is the experience you get with me. You can't get this everywhere in Nashville. Mm -hmm. You can only get it with me. And I've been in your chair plenty of times. <laughs> but you want to you wanna show the people the experience they get. And that is what, and even if you have to be consistent, who cares? You know, many people be like, man, she always posting pictures of her doing hair. And you always see McDonald's commercials. You always see and you still buy it. Mm -hmm. And you still buy it. So even if it get on people's nerves, mm -hmm. who cares? Like Faint said, consistency matters. So create that experience and show people what experience they get with you. Okay, thank you. I have another quick question. So I'm sorry, y'all. It's I've been looking for somebody, some people to talk to about branding and marketing in a safe life, like for real, for real. Like this is like, amen for my soul. Like I'm so serious. But as far as like, you know, being, uh, being saved, being a church girl, you know, there are other people do other things, you know, like to draw certain people in, you know, to their salons, like. They may offer, uh, they may play the secular music and they may offer a glass of wine and they may do this, you know, just to draw the people. What would you recommend as far as, I would say just in any, in any business, period. What would you recommend like to, as far as like drawing the people other than praying and you know, asking God to send the Holy Ghost in and give direction mm -hmm. from a like a natural physical standpoint. How how would you do that? Like, what, what does that look like? I think you have to sit down. Um, it reminds me of a couple of the interviews we did. So, like with Apostolic Creators and Entrepreneurs, someone told me, you know, that came in, um, say, well, why didn't you just make it like Christian entrepreneurs and stuff? And I said, because that ain't what God gave me. And when you start pulling in just anything, if you go fishing and you fishing with a net, you know, we want that for souls, right? You want to catch everything, right? Mm -hmm. But when you know you're called for a specific thing, you just throw out a net, you're going to catch everything too. Mm -hmm. And everything that you catch mm -hmm. might not be what you intended to catch. You might not know how to clean a shark. 
and might try to cook it and die eating it, you know? So really sit back and determine what it is that you want out of your brand. If what is it that you would like for it to do? So yes, we know that you're not serving up the wine, 100%. I agree with that. And maybe you're playing the Christian music. I love that. I went to my chiropractor and I heard they were playing some like contemporary Christian music. I'm like, Lord, this let me know that I'm in the right place. Like I didn't even know. I knew it was different when I went there. They're not apostolic, but they do have a form of godliness, you know, and, and you can tell a difference. So understand what your standard is. You know, um, different churches have different standards. Some of them may not be biblical. Some of them just be the, the standards of that church, like up, up under my church. You know, we don't cut our hair, right? That's our thing. You know, it may not be a heaven or hell issue, but one of the young ladies who's a cosmetologist that goes to my church, she not cutting nobody's hair, whether you saved or unsaved, that ain't her thing. But the person that's at the booth down, she may, but she she doesn't. And one of them has a standard where she just doesn't do men hair. Now that's neither right nor wrong, you know, depending on, you know, the Bible said a man shouldn't have long hair, all this, but at the end of the day, that's her personal conviction. And she's firm to that. The young lady that we did the interview on, Kylia O'Neill, who's a celebrity stylist, she doesn't make pants. She doesn't even deal with it. And we mm. talked with her about the fact, I seen her check. This was when she was like 22. A lady came in that was getting ready to get something made for her sorority. And she asked her where she wanted it to be. And the lady was like, I want it here. And it was probably three inches above the, above the knees. She looked at a 45-year-old woman and she said, this is your options. You know, I don't make stuff there. And when she gave the option, she did it nicely. The lady moved on. You aim, you, you address it, you empathize, and you move forward. If you don't make it a big deal, they won't make it a big deal. And they'll learn to respect it. When people don't even can't identify with what you believe, but they know that you're consistent in what you believe, they'll learn to respect it. So figure out what else it is that you're doing. Are you giving them care packages when they leave? Hey girl, here's my care package. You know, try this out when you go home. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you like this. What is it that you can and do to enhance the experience now that you got them in? Or, girl, I had these t-shirts printed. I want you to, um, here, this is a gift for being so loyal, you know, to us. Mm -hmm. Or you've done this, you've done that. And now they're wearing your brand and people love free stuff. You got mm -hmm. And don't just do a cheap t-shirt. Do one that feels good. Mm -hmm. So when they mm -hmm. wear girl, well, well, what is this? Such and such. Oh, this is my beautician girl. She gave me a shirt, a shirt because I'm a VIP client. What are you doing to go above and beyond to mm -hmm. make it feel important and feel love? When you get an unexpected gift, even if it's little, just the fact that someone thought of you. It's such mm -hmm. a, a, a deal maker. You're not serving wine, but do you have, you know, do you have uh, water? Do you have a certain type of water? Are you serving Fiji water? Things like that. That's what I would consider. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I would like to get y'all's information so that I could um, get some more pointers and get some more pointers and um, figure some, get some, some things worked out. Yeah. Thank y'all. You are no problem. You know, please put your information in the chat. Yes, ma'am. And uh, when we do send the replay, I will definitely um, uh, put y'all's information in the in the email for the replay as well. Put y'all's information in the chat. This has been awesome. Anybody else? Any more questions, comments? Thank you for sharing that, Sister Nakita. That was good. Anybody else, any questions or comments? I've got a question in reference to creating content. How important is creating content on your in your social media? And I get the words mixed up, content and context. <laughs> I get, I'll be trying to get my grandkids to help me with, with both of them. So y'all can kind of help us with that tonight. The content yeah. and the context. <laughs> Yeah, that's just the way of the world right now, mm. putting out content. You know, um, a lot of people want to see the reels, the videos, the um, it, it's more personal. People enjoy knowing about your personal life. And that's one thing that I had to get over because um, I'm even though I'm not person, I'm not private I'm private in a lot of ways um I don't mind showing people that I travel a lot but um you may not know every single detail um but people like to know where you get it from where you get that shirt from where you 
where did you go? What restaurant was that? What did you order? Mm -hmm. You know, so having, yes, having that personal side, it can become uncomfortable, but you have to, you have to have your own limit you know, have to have to say, okay, this is what I will do. And I just won't do, but it is very important to have content out there. Even if you go on a weekend trip, you don't have to post it in the same, um, while you're there. Cause mm -hmm. I've learned to post things after I'm back mm -hmm. home and all that stuff. Cause right. you know, people start tracking you to That's see, true. Oh, she gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, she live right here. Cause sometimes we just give too much. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you come back from your trip and you want to share your pictures, um, put that in a video you know, those are things that people like to see. So I will say when it comes to business wise, it is very important to have content, whether if it is um, if you're shampooing someone hair, what product you use, if you have a T-shirt brand, what are you how do you dress it? You know, how do you style it? So now somebody will buy the t-shirt so they could style it the way you style it so sometimes it's, it, it's good to see and to show people how you do what you do with your product you know how can I use it is it just one way or a variety of ways yeah. so. and the more that you do it with content creation the better you'll get with it I'm not necessarily a fan of it to be honest which is not my favorite thing to do um, I have a young lady who uh, actually does do a lot of the social media for me now at this point because I'm always so busy, but I send her over ideas and stuff. So you got to understand who you are. Like, you know, if you come up with an idea, write it down. Like, I'm really big on journaling. My first lady has taught me to journal because if you think that you're going to keep it up here, you're going to forget it. Right. So but you got to start with doing it. So recently I've been on this weight loss journey. Um, You know, I played sports in school and then you get older, you know, I got saved for real. I came in and, and I fellowshiped like they did in uh, Acts 30, uh, 239, uh -huh. right? <laughs> so I came and I fellowship. Anytime we fellowship, we going to eat. So I put on some weight and then I got in a car accident where I had two herniated discs when I wasn't able to get mobile. But recently I've lost uh, about 80 pounds. And so now I'm kind of sharing my story, like as I'm going on this journey. And one of my friends, who's actually the one who came and taught us in the Apostolic Crazy Entrepreneurs Facebook group, who's a fitness trainer, she told us straight up, she said, the Bible says your temple is a, you the temple of the Holy Ghost and you a temple. Why are you treating it like a shack? Don't got us together. And we all been running ever since, right? Competing with each other. Yeah, but yeah. I'm up telling this, you know, doing a, I did a reel of me in the gym doing some jump roping and then doing a little bit of weight lift. And everybody's like, you know, tell us about this. It's so, um, it is uh, so inspiring. And I'm like, I'm not no fitness guru. I'm not no, um, you know, this is not, and, my, and the young lady who's uh, Precious Moye, who is the, uh, actually the expert, she was like, well, faint, you know, yes, you are. Cause we're all influencers in our own right. And so now people want to know what kind of shoes you wear. And so in my mind now, I'm thinking about not just the fitness part, because I don't go to the gym just because of the weight. I go to the gym because I feel better. It helps with depression. It helps with anxiety. It helps with all these different things, right? And when people start to realize that, and you know, now God is giving me, it's opening up my mind where now I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a reel now. And I never would have thought I would have been doing this. I'm going to make a reel now about like, overcoming fears of going to the gym mm -hmm. no but we, a lot of times we think people looking at us right and ain't nobody really looking at us these people are not looking at themselves <laughs> you know um same thing of what kind of shoes am i wearing and when you start doing that type of stuff because y'all all got stuff that y'all like a particular perfume or particular this do you know that amazon will give you 10 percent if you create an amazon creators account when people buy from your link your affiliate link so people, girl, where you get that dress from? You taking a picture on Sunday anyway in your Sunday's best. Mm -hmm. So shoes from Amazon, this from that, and put the link there. And now, you know, you can feel good about your shopping, your retail therapy, because you're getting 10% back from it. And you and people, people always say uh, they'll they'll show certain things. They'll say the link is in the bio. <laughs> they'll say the link is in the bio. The link is in the bio. And you can just post one picture. Start out by posting one picture. Mm -hmm. And content is like a muscle. The more you use it, the more, the bigger it's going to get. And you'll realize that I'm getting better at this. My mindset is getting better. Everything is content. Everything that we do is content. You don't have to share every single thing. Sometimes people just share a Bible scripture that they highlighted that stood out to them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you share that, people are like, man, this is true. Like people say, oh, somebody told me the other day at work, they said, 
Oh, the Bible say, God shall not judge. I'll say the Bible didn't say that. Tupac said that. The Bible say the saints don't judge the angels. So you don't yeah. think that I can judge you? Right. Now, if you know that you ain't sin and you ain't living right, I'm not going to judge you. But yeah. if you're telling me that you're a saint and I'm saying, because guess what? If you think that I slipped up and said a cuss word, you going to judge me? Right. <laughs> you know, I'm just, you better not say nothing that sounds like it, right? Because they're going to be like, ain't you supposed to be a Christian? Right. Well, <laughs> So you have to start working that thing and knowing that thing. And it opens up you to do so much and people going to ask you questions and then they paying you to do it anyways. Now, like once you start posting content, people can send you money. People can send you gifts. If you're going out and you have and you buy some Nikes, at least get, get paid off of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And Cause people want to believe it or not, you always get more views than you going to get likes. Yeah. Cause some people, yeah. no matter what age you are, uh -huh. will never like it, but best believe they watching. Yeah. And I don't care who buy it. Mm -hmm. I know where the dividends coming at. So, so I can the views, keep it moving. <laughs> so with the views, once you post the real, is that what you're talking about? Once you yeah, post real. the real, and then uh if they just scroll past, or do they have to stop and look at look at the content? They have to stop and kind of look at it. And that's why it's important that when you post something um, and as you do it, you'll get better at it. Right. Mm -hmm. When you stop and when you post something, you want to create something that causes them to stop the scroll. Mm -hmm. Now, all y'all look like y'all can cook whenever I'm in y'all town. Please, can I stop? All y'all look like y'all can throw down. I'm talking about like homemade cakes when you're oh, doing it. And it looks great. And I told, I called my mom and my dad. I said, look, somebody need to cook me some turnip greens. Because everybody just can't cook this. You know I'm an old school baby, right? When you post that stuff, I just made this homemade cake. And you take your phone and you try it. You wipe the screen out. That's a, that's a little uh, right there. That'll help you. Wipe the screen out. Make sure it's real clear. And mm -hmm. you putting that that glaze or whatever it is on that, that, um, that pound cake. And we like... Cause you know, our generation, we make tacos and these new right. grandmas, they make tacos. Y'all, I, I ain't never get no taco from my grandma. And you posting that people going, sus, I got to have a slice of that cake. Right. Yes. The slices of $5, the whole cake's $50. Mm -hmm. right there. That's content and you done made you some money. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. good. That's good. This is really awesome, y'all. We're going to take uh, time for maybe one more comment or one more question. And then we're going to go ahead and close this out. This has been awesome. I tell you what, you all have shared just whoo, loads of information, loads of information. I think Sister Narkita's back on again. Go ahead, Sister Narkita. Girl, you are the chosen vessel lady. <laughs> Shut the front door. Are you oh, serious? I have bought, like, I love your t-shirts, like for real, for real. Thank like you. oh my god like when y'all see me at church and i got my t-shirts on quite a few of them are hers oh. like for real for real yeah Thank like you. man oh my god like you doing it <laughs> like that's what's up like for real for real like i just got so excited like all over again like oh my god Thank but you yeah so you much. doing it you doing it i i like your t-shirts and they're I'm very good quality so I yeah so much thank you so much i'm so humble i'm most comfortable believe it or not behind the scenes mariska will tell you um when y'all had y'all conference at paw and we had ours a week after um yeah. in st louis um, i like staying behind the scene i don't have to be the face of it but you know a lot of people come up and our organization is predominantly you know caucasian it is growing to be more multicultural but those are the facts it is what it is right mm -hmm. and you know i had one young girl came to me and she came and she rubbed my hand and she said thank you and she rolled my hand. I said, thank you for what? She said, thank you for being black. Oh, um, being wow. and doing this with such a spirit of excellence. And those are the kind of moments that keep me, you know, going with it. So I'm appreciative. I'm very, like, I'm bashful. <laughs> thank you so much. That is good. So is she, are you the ones that, uh, is, is, are her t-shirts the ones that, uh, that McNeese has? Um, I'm not for sure, but if y'all saw the Jesus, no. Oh, not uh, okay. Thing no. Like the Jesus, her t-shirts uh, aren't the one that Magnese has. No, 
Hers is like the um the apostolic t shirts and do it for it says do it for the vine, but it's do it for God. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, I got a they they she's got some really, really nice uh t shirts. And my favorite one was the Jesus is God that was in the white with the rose gold. Mm -hmm. I tried to go back yeah. and order around another for a while. One, but they is oh gone. God. So you know, I really would like for y'all to bring that rose gold back. Jesus <laughs> is God. Uh, you, you know, know that. So we gonna we gonna work on that. I actually got some paperwork for you know because we trademark our designs and stuff, and it's getting to the time where our attorney has to go back in there and just let them know that it's still being used in commerce. And that's another another animal. Make sure y'all protecting yourself because God gonna give you the vision, but He ain't gonna work it or protect it for you. And if you yeah. don't do what He called you to do, He will give it to somebody else, even if it's a sinner. Yeah. Somebody will take it. Wants it in the earth. <laughs> Correct. Wow. So like wow. you said, you we're talking about trademarking, uh, and I know we're getting a little bit late here, but this is so good, <laughs> but you're talking about trademarking. Uh, so how would a person trademark? Do you need to trademark your logo? Do you need to trademark your um, uh, the business name? How What all needs to be trademarked? Marketing. So I would start out, you know, once you know that you're pretty serious as far as the business name and stuff, and um, if you guys reach out to me, I'll, I can give you some uh, a couple of attorneys that can be of a great benefit for you as well. Um, you know, when you go to register your business inside of like, for example, the state of Florida, Georgia, whatever it may be, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you could technically go register chosen vessels apparel in whatever state that you're in. Now, I'm telling y'all, y'all could, right? Um, just not in the state of Florida. When you register a business in the state of um, that you're located in, that's like state protection. A trademark is more so federal protection. Okay. So if you've done something in a state versus you've done it federally, I can come in and trump anybody that's chosen vessels clothing, chosen vessels apparel, vessels chosen, whatever it is with those words on it. And it makes your brand has more substance with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more so on a nationwide level. Mm -hmm. And then and when you get into trademark, I tell people to consider it's like a house. So you go in a house, there's different rooms in the house. You go to the bathroom, we know that's for using the restroom. We know we go to the kitchen, that's for using the kitchen. There's different classifications up under trademarks. Okay. So if someone went and bought an airplane and put chosen vessels on there, I wouldn't do anything about it because I didn't classify that one. But when you're talking about clothing and wearing and stuff like that, that's 100% ownership. And trademarking is really like digital real estate. Um, mm -hmm. It's you taking dominion in the... The, the world saying that I this belongs to me. And the beautiful thing about it is that if someone like one of the um, ones we own is be apostolic and also Jesus is God, do it for the Lord, product of prayer, a host of different things. Mm -hmm. So people will go and put these on a hat because it sounds good. And I know, you know, we'll send an email to cease and desist letter say you need to take this down. We own it. Da, 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 this is that and the third. And some people get upset. How can you own something like that? This, this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. Do you supposed to be a Christian? No, we hear it. We hear it when we hear mm. it. Mm. But also, if someone says, you know what, we want to use these words that you have, then you can lease them to use that word. You can say, hey, for one year, I'll let you use this, but I'm, it's going to run you $20,000 a year, and you can only produce X amount. So when you own it, it's just like when you're leasing the house. Mm -hmm. If you own it, you can put the parameters around what that person is able to do. Not only do you own it for your brand, but it becomes another source of income for you. And you can trademark your logo as well. I recommend starting with the name first mm -hmm. um, because the name is so broad. You may change the way that the name looks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and definitely consult with an attorney. It's not anything that I recommend that you do online through like companies like LegalZoom because a lot of those are not attorneys. They're paralegals. Some of the time they can get it done. Uh, anytime you're messing with anything that's legal, I always, I'm not, um, I'm not ashamed to ask them. Um, I have a question. What is your success rate? Mm -hmm. it comes down to getting a trademark approved because it's not like I register and it's approved. It takes about a year now because once you register it, anytime you see the TM, that means that they're openly in the process of trademarking. You cannot use a TM without you being submitting that before the USPTO. Um, USPTO. When you see the R with the registered, that means that that thing is fully sealed. It's already protected. It's ready to go.
So I would definitely recommend that when you're considering the name, you should consider trademark so you're protected nationally, mm -hmm. but also consulting an attorney. And we have a few good Christian attorneys and a couple of apostolic attorneys that will walk you through the process. And they can go and vary from, from anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 to $3,000, depending on how many classes that you're doing. Because mm -hmm. if you're doing it for church, you're doing it for education and podcast, those are two different classes, but it's cheaper to do it all together if you can. Um, and some people say, I can't afford to do it. I say, you can't afford not to do it Absolutely. because if you, if you don't do it and somebody see it and it's really about who got the most money at that part and mm -hmm. they see it look good, they're going to take it 100%. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, this has really been awesome. You all, we do thank you so much for sharing and, and all of the information is in the chat. And, uh, and and really just go on their Facebook page, maybe just become a member. I think that's how they would join, right? Mm -hmm. Did you all want to tell them how to join? Yes. So on Facebook, it is Apostolic Creatives and Entrepreneurs. Also, that is the YouTube. So you can go out there and find our YouTube channel, Apostolic Creatives and Entrepreneurs. You can subscribe, help us to get our subscri subscribers up. Um, also on Instagram, join Ace Today. And if you would like, I put everything in the chat. If you would yes. like merchandise, like the shirt or the hat, we have a um, another design. It is joinacetoday.com. If you would like to support the business, um, and then also the podcast, you can listen to it on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, any of the streaming services, you are able to access it there. And I think that is it, Faint. Did I cover everything? Yeah, everything, if you type in join, we kind of keep everything consistent for the branding so you don't have to remember a lot. Everything is join ACE today. Um, so you can kind of catch us on all social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and then we have a group on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. If you uh, message Mariska, she can give it to you if you have any difficulty finding. I'm up under um, Facebook as Faint Adams if you message me. We can shoot you the direct link in that group. We encourage each other. There's people we're getting that active um, that are like you guys that are inspiring or either full time. And, and it's for everybody. You know, it's things that you guys are seasoned in that we need y'all for. You know what I mean? And that's what the purpose of that group is. Um, and then all the merchandise links there, there, there as well. So, and it's just there to be a blessing. We got the fitness group. That's why my phone going now because they dropping it. They done close their rings on their Apple Watch. Everybody working out. Everybody's trying to be their best. And it's a beautiful thing. So you can reach us there. Yes, ma'am. And thank you so much as well for the opportunity. You guys have been amazing. It's been a blessing um, to, to be able to see y'all and to communicate. Amen. 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 Well, we do have a couple of announcements. And then after that, we'll have final remarks from... Uh, is it Evangelist Adams? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Adams. <laughs> Funny. And then from, uh, from then uh, Sister Mariska will close us out with her final remarks and prayer. Meanwhile, we are gearing up for our council. Uh, the First Apostolic Council of Kentucky and Tennessee is this week, and we're excited about it. It starts tomorrow night. It'll be in Paducah, Kentucky. Tomorrow night, uh, of course, the I think the theme is Commission Let's Go to Work. And we know our diocesan is our pastor, Bishop Sherman Merritt, the preacher machine. And the um, the council chair is Suffragan Bishop Johnny Blissett. Tuesday night speaker is uh, District Elder Reginald Crenshaw of Old Hickory, Tennessee. Uh, Wednesday night speaker is District Elder Anthony Walton. Of course, he's the host pastor in Old Church. Thursday night is Pastor Melanie Hunter uh, of Louisville, Kentucky. This is a dynamic woman of God that, oh my God, she's a powerful preacher. Uh, as well as Saturday and Friday night is Bishop Merritt. He will be preaching Friday night. Saturday, we'll close out with the Young People's Part with Elder Aaron Porter of PCAFI. And so we are really gearing up for an awesome time in the council. Uh, and so we do have some council um, uh People on here that are staff, uh, Minister uh, Antoinette Taylor is, is, is part of the council staff, uh, Dr. Patricia Crook, part of the Christian education staff, and I know uh, Evangelist Carolyn Dunlap, and I'm trying to see who all is on here that might be a part of that. And so we just thank the Lord for uh, the council and what he's going to do there. We do have day sessions as well. 
And I uh, think uh, the day sessions will be like Wednesday through Saturday, of course, that will still be at the convention center. Everything's going to be held at the convention center there in Paducah. You can also stream it uh, Facebook Live as well as the YouTube page. You can look at, uh, I think it'd be a Greater Christ Temple uh, Facebook page as well as the um, uh, Mighty uh, FAC Kentucky Tennessee Apostolic Facebook page as well. I usually share it to my Facebook page. So if you can't find it, you can look at my Facebook page, Catherine Morrison, and you'll be able to see the evening services. Some of the day sessions may be there as well. So we're looking forward to that. Of course, we're getting ready for our groundbreaking uh, of our new sanctuary at 804 Young's Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, Greater Christ Temple Church. We're excited about that. It'll be uh, October the 8th. It'll be at, uh, of course, we have 11 o'clock service, and then we'll have our groundbreaking about 3.30 or 4. After that, we will have service. Our guest speaker is none other than uh, Pastor Aziza Morrison from Washington, D.C. So we're looking forward to high times. So if you are not doing anything, you're not busy, you can come visit us at that time. We'd be glad to see you. We have a question. Sister Sandra Bush, have her hands raised. Yes, I would just like to make an announcement that on um, September the 29th, mm -hmm. during the council on that Friday, the Ursha board will be selling fish. I will be having a fish fry and chicken. So we will be selling fish plates and chicken sandwiches and fish sandwiches with two sides come with the fish plate um, and desserts and drinks at Elder Walden's church. Mm -hmm. doing from 11 to 2 o'clock. So that's a fundraiser for the FAC Ursha board mm -hmm. um, at the council. Okay, great. And I think they're also recruiting Usher. So if you serve yes, in your church and you want to serve during the council, please see uh, Dr. Uh, Mitzi Brown. Johnson, Johnson and, um, and she'll be able to sign you up. I know they're really needing help in that area. Thank you for that announcement, Sister Bush. Uh, Sister uh, Muirhead, I think you had your hands raised. Okay, she's probably on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close out with final remarks from uh, Evangelist Adams and then Sister Mariska Warren will close us out with her remarks and prayer. Thank you all so much for being on here tonight. You all have given a wealth of knowledge, so much information. I've made my notes. And uh, even though I'm in the music industry, everything goes the same way with, with even artists and writing and things like that. You have to really protect yourself. And so thank you all for sharing that. And we look forward to what else God's got for you all. Amen. Amen. Uh, Evangelist Adams. Um, my, my final remarks would definitely be um, no matter where you are in your journey, if God has given you something, he's given it to you for a reason because he definitely wants it inside of the earth. And so, you know, um, I know a lot of time fear can paralyze us. And I tell people all the time, I'd rather be dead before I be paralyzed. Because when you're dead, at least you can say, Lazarus, come forth. When you paralyze, you see everything that's going around, but you just can't connect with it. And so if God is giving you the vision, I would definitely make it a matter of a prayer and say, Lord, what is it that you want me to do with this? Or why did you allow for this to be in my heart or for me to feel so passionate um, uh, about this? And also, you know, stay in your own lane. Like, don't be so busy wrecking, trying to wreck your car, looking at everybody else or not thinking mm -hmm. that you're not good enough with doing this. You focus on what you're doing, the vehicle God has given you and the tool that he's provided you with to get where you want to be. Because sometimes we'll think we're, you know, well, I'm not, they, they doing this better than me and they're, and I can't do it because they're doing it. Well, God put it on your heart. He, he equipped you to do it. And if he hasn't given you all the tools, he's going to provide them. We serve a God that is wanting you to step out of the boat and take some action. You know, Peter fell in the water, but he's the only one that can say that I walked on the water, even if it was uh -huh. just for a little bit. So whatever God is giving you, trust that he's going to pr protect you with giving you the tools to get it done. And he'll provide you the finances and the people that can connect with you in order to get to your, your goal and your destination. He doesn't always show us the end product, because if he showed us everything that we were going to take to get to it, you probably never would have start. But he's not just going to dangle a carrot and not carry you on through it. So just stick with him. 
and continue to move forward. But the Bible says that faith without works is dead. And now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Not just faith, but now faith. Yeah. So you need to execute on that thing now. This is the time for us to be able to move forward. Because I truly believe that in this season, a lot of you guys that are on this this um this live and on this Zoom call, we're truly up under an open heaven. And anything that you ask God for, I'm confident yes. that he's able to do it. You just got to do your part. Amen. Amen. All right, now. All right. Well, we have um, the word of the Lord has been um, read to us. Um, glory be to God. So I will not say anything else to mess up what uh, Evangelist Faint has spoken to us on tonight. So I will just close us out in prayer because that's that's what I do well. Um, I may not preach well, but I can pray. Uh, but if all else fails, I just want to say thank you, Evangelist Morrison, again, for bringing us on to your platform. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for the dialogue, for staying with us. I appreciate it. Thank you for the love, the support. Y'all keep us in prayer as we do what God has given us. And I will close this out in prayer if that's okay. Amen. All right. Well, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you um, for another day of, of doing and being who you called us to be. And Lord, as we progress on this life journey, I pray that you would give us all the courage, the boldness, um, and the strength, the tenacity to do what you have called us to do and what you have put in us. Let us not take for granted the talents the gifts, the calling, and the purpose that you have placed on our lives. And Lord, as we um, let the day go, I mean, or, or, or go to sleep at night to so God, that Lord, you would just, um, be with us, protect us and keep us from all hurt, harm and danger. And Lord, I thank you for this platform. Bless us to evangelist Morrison, um, for what she has, what you have given her, give her the strength, the ability and the capacity to do what you have called her to do. And Lord, we thank you right now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our guests tonight. Ooh, women in yeah. business. We're closing out tonight. Women in business. Yes. And so great. We'll be talking about various things, okay. uh, but we'll be featuring information in reference to breast cancer awareness for the month of October and other areas, other things that we're going to be covering in the month of October. Lord's willing, we'll see you all next Monday on This Is My Story. Y'all have a wonderful evening. In Amen. Jesus' name. I bless you. Love everyone. Amazing. Bless you. Love you. Great job, both of you all. God bless you all. Great. This was wonderful. Keep the good work. Fantastic, ladies. Fantastic, ladies. Fantastic.